Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? So, should I go to Yarno's screen, I guess? Yes, let's do that. Okay, so this next section is um, a type along or something, not, not a type along, but a demo, but um, something between us doing things in the stream and an exercise. Um, so, um, it works best when there's a lot of active participation in the notes document. Um, so, uh, this is about modular code development. And just to get started in the document, we have a few um, questions. Um, so, please go and take a look at those and answer those. Um, yes, we see them here. Yeah, so um, there's also some answers given away in this image that is linked from the uh, from the materials so just um, so. quickly show that but we are also already getting yeah. some answers which is good yeah so to you what does modular code development mean what does module modular even mean yeah what what is modular um, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of what, what is modular is the International Space Station, because I think I learned <laughs> the word from there. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, it, it just consists of this kind of a central structure, but that's also kind of a module of its own. You can, mm -hmm. and the main thing is you, different groups have made these sections to this, to the station and you can pluck them together. They're like Legos. You can take one piece and plug it into another piece. And the idea is that they they should um, like all the wiring should work, and that there's some sort of interface between the two that helps um, all the parts work in um, all of these sections. Mm -hmm. So basically, so... you can ship up one new module and connect it, and that works. Like you can add and remove things. You can understand each part separately. Yeah. And someone can design one one part of a bigger whole, yeah. and then uh, as long as the interface makes sense, you can plug it into yeah. a a bigger thing, and out of those smaller modules, then make something even uh, something bigger and more complicated. And it's still kind of it remains yeah. understandable and manageable. Yeah. So why are we why do we have a lesson on modular code development? Like, what's the big point here? Well, um, yeah, so um, a software project can get really big and it can get, and it, in fact, it does get so big that uh, or software gets so big that it's hard to understand. Like if, if you have the whole thing written down in one section, like it, it is very hard to continue developing it. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, when you make something modular, it's not just easier to understand the modules and then understand the whole that the modules make up it's also easier to split up the work. Mm -hmm. So you can split mm -hmm. the different sections, the different modules between different developers, different people in your team, yeah. and um, someone from the outside can come and uh, write a module for your okay. uh, for the thing you designed. Yeah. So it, it makes development easier, it makes testing easier, um, and it makes it easier to share your work. Yeah. It kind of pulls together a lot of what we've yeah. done in the past two weeks. So, at least in Python, the things you import are called modules. Does modular code de development have to be about these modules, or is that what this is about? It's not exactly. Um, okay. Modular code development is also about functions, being small functions that do um, individual things that are also um, that you can pluck out of a code, then move into another code and will still work. Mm -hmm. um, so making your, first of all, writing functions, um, but then also writing functions that are in themselves modular, that they are um, independent of the whole uh, project in some way. Um, mm -hmm. 
and well, but it but it is also organizing those then into modules. So organizing them into separate files that could be depending on the language, could be Python modules, could be libraries, um, could be shared objects and so on. Yeah. Like depending on packages. Mm -hmm. There's different languages for the or different programming languages are different have different words for these, but yeah. the structure is roughly the same. What about this last question? Would you prefer your code to be two times slower if it was easier to read and understand? Is that... That depends a lot on the situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. If it's an, a high-performance computing thing, then the main code, of course, should be as fast as you can make it. Mm -hmm. um, but in most cases, the code should be first understandable yeah. and then maybe also efficient if that's necessary. Mm -hmm. But first you should have a code that works and then you can try to make it faster. Okay. But that's actually something yeah. I didn't mention in testing, but um, one very useful idea is to write two implementations of something. So mm -hmm. you have a slower algorithm and then you write also write a faster algorithm. And if those produce the same results, then probably both okay. of them work. Um, yeah, the, the more that different once. they are, the better. Yeah, yeah, I, I did that once to like verify something. Okay. I've done a lot of high performance computing work, and there, that's a very useful approach. You, um, yeah, because things you write for the main thing need to be really fast, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then it, they are not readable. Yeah. So you also write a slower version. Yeah. So is modularity always, does it always make it slower or? Mm, no, I yeah. don't actually, it's an interesting question because I can't yeah. actually think why it would make anything slower. Okay, in that's good. Principle. Um, so, I mean, code that's easier to understand is unlikely to be really fast just because it's a different, you're optimizing for a different thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, they they, aren't, they don't have a lot of overlap. Yeah. And I guess making something more modular might also make it slower just because you are yeah. optimizing for a different thing Yeah. when you're so, writing it. So I guess this question but, F, um, yeah. I guess this question F, would you prefer your code to be twice, two times slower if it's easier to read and understand? That's not exactly the trade-off we're making here then. Um, yeah, not exactly. But um, yeah. I mean that, Yeah. It, it's still a good question to think about, and it is kind of related to this lesson because modular code development is ultimately about making it understandable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. manageable. Okay. Taking a really big complex system and making it manageable is, yeah. I guess, mainly what we're talking about. Well, understandable, understandability and being able to reuse it is definitely things I want. So what yeah. do we do next? I'll pop okay. back to your screen. Uh, yes. And... Um, so yeah, here are, here is one answer or, or some answers, um, that you could have copied from if you were looking at the notes, but yeah, yeah this is a link from the notes. Okay. So, so, so yeah, there's a lot of things that can, that do go wrong with, uh, research software development, like uh, long functions and overcomplicated design, this yeah. kind of, a as a maze of problems in yeah. the code that you have to get through. Um, so so but, is this yeah, sort of like, one. if you have bad code design, non modular code, maybe it works in the short term, but in the long term, you're going to have a major problem. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the idea. So it, it becomes complex and something that is complex is hard to maintain and hard to take yeah. care of in the long run. Yeah. Um, gets to the point where you don't understand the code you wrote a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> very okay. easily. Sounds good. Okay. So here are the questions we already uh, talked about. Just skipping through that section. Um, and I will not go through the learning examples mm -hmm. in a lot of detail either because we partly already talked about that. Yeah. Um, but this is uh, taking a lot from the past two um, weeks maybe slightly different point of view than in the testing lesson where we took a lot of this social coding and um, sharing uh, things. 
um, aspect of it. But um, now we're mostly working locally by trying to make a local code better. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just get to the oh. task itself. OK, so uh, what do we do? So um, here's an example task. And now this is much closer to real scientific code than uh, the add function in the testing lesson. So um, it's hopefully somewhat readable. Um, if you go through it, you can see what's happening. But um, it could be made made a lot uh, more modular, a lot, okay. a lot better. So let's okay. just start by copying this into a Jupyter notebook. And um, can you switch to your screen okay. if you have the notebook ready? There is my screen. Let's okay. adjust the size of stuff. I've made a new directory for this project. I will start a Python 3 kernel. And should I just copy and paste from? Yeah, let's just start by copying and pasting here so that we can all see the code in the same way. OK. Um, and so, then we'll see what it does. Should I run it? Uh, yeah, why not? Um, can you make this oh. screen either wider or uh, yes. show the entire lines? Or uh, what do you call it? Wrap the lines? Oh. OK, so now it's visible. Uh, okay. You need the temperatures file. So you you need to download some files. Yes. From. So should we actually just go through? Like how did we know that? Um, yeah. What so is happening here? What do we see? So so yeah. it says read CSV temperatures dot CSV. And if I scroll down, no such file or directory. And it gives the file name helpfully. Yeah. So we are missing a file. Mm -hmm. And um, if we start looking at the code, if we had started looking at the code before running it, we would have realized that it's reading a file. Yeah. So um, why don't we just um, download the file? Do you have the link? Should I do available? it from Jupyter? Uh, yeah, why not? So let's see if it works. I know. On my computer, I have a program called wgit installed that will download a file and save it in the current directory. So I will run this. Okay. And it says temperatures.csv saved. OK, but so now course, we should have the file. Yeah. And I will delete this row. Yeah. yeah. OK. OK. So should now I we should again? have the file. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Let's do what we were thinking of doing. So just see what it does first. And. It's taking a while to run. Hmm. Well, at the meantime, we can look at the line. So it is importing pandas and matplotlib. Matplotlib is a plotting library. Um, and pandas is for data processing. Then we define that number of measurements is 25, whatever that means. Um, and we read in some data from a CSV file. So this is. Um, we do have this in the notes. So it's data provided by the Finnish Meteorological Institute about um, ah, uh, observations of air temperature at the Helsinki Vantaa airport in 2022. OK, so there's another error somewhere. Uh, well, let's see. Temperature. Um, key error air temperature. OK. Well, let's um let's walk through the code and uh, hopefully it will be yeah. Should we look at yeah. the file, like open it and see? Um, okay, so what we are doing here is we're reading this data from the CSV file and taking this number of measurements, uh, number of rows. So we're taking twenty five measurements from this data file, and um, then the temperatures should be a column from this CSV file with this mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, I guess it doesn't have a column with that name. Mm -hmm. So probably the structure of the data has changed between the yeah. code refinery workshop. So maybe we should take a look at what the okay. CSV file contains. Should I open it through the file browser? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, oh, you you mean the one in um, in Jupyter? That makes sense. Uh, so it seems seems a bit broken. It did not download. Uh, it links. It doesn't link to the raw data. So 
Ah, uh, this is yeah. okay. It should this be raw is... data from GitHub. There's a mistake in the link. Okay. So, so I can I send will... you the correct uh, link. I, I have the have correct it. link here. Okay. So now I'm again using Jupyter to remove the temperatures.csv file. And now I will paste raw data, raw.github user content. So this should be raw. Yep. And now it says it's saved. Should we try again? Yeah. Um, let's see what happens. Oh, okay. That okay, was that nice looks better. Fast. Okay. Okay. So we're reading 25 rows of the data and uh, plotting something, but it's calculating some statistics here. So it, it's calculating the mean mm -hmm. of the temperature measurements. And then it's plotting the temperatures. Oh, and it's adding this dashed line for the mean of those temperatures. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess this is the first 25 days of the year, so we're talking January. Yeah. So the temperatures range from minus 2 to minus mm -hmm. 12 or so. Yeah. So it makes sense. It actually looks looks okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so what could we do yeah. to make this um, better or specifically more modular? Um, yeah. How is it not modular now? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can see some immediate problems. This notebook so, has to have a file with one certain name, yeah. and one certain output, and runs everything at once. So um, please go to the notes um, and add any suggestions on what should we do, what we can do to make this code more modular specifically or just better in some way um and yeah we can we can spot a few problems here immediately yeah um we do have a couple of goals in mind though um as we start working on this we want to be able to create a plot create several different plots we want a plot mm -hmm. with 25 measurements but we also want a plot with 100 measurements and with 500 measurements mm -hmm. um and i get okay. so then um with, just yeah oh well let's start with that um and we have some suggestions here so uh so don't load the data when you're creating the plot uh so plot it uh load it separately okay. so separate the plotting and loading the data that's a good idea um, separate the read data from file and com compute statistics and plot results into different functions. Yes, that is a very good idea. Yeah. Um, so three different functions. Okay. Um, so three functions. Yeah. Let's let's do that. Um, and should they be so in three separate cells? In or... Jupyter. I mean, yeah, that that works. Okay. Um, I don't have a preference on whether to split functions into cells or not. Mm -hmm. So what should I do? Can you? Um, OK, well, the suggestion now is split it into three different cells. So let's okay. make a cell for a read data from file function. OK. Um, and copy. Split the cell there. Yeah. Should I split num measurements out? Uh, yeah, so the yeah number of measurements needs to be set here. So uh, yeah, split it out. Okay. Mm, but now I make these functions. So can you give me some advice? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So to make the uh, so how to split it into functions? Yes. Okay. So the suggestion was to make a read data from file. So I guess that would be. Um, running this pandas.readcsv, but we probably also want to keep the temperatures equal something because like we, we, we don't want to write a function that is just pandas uh, the pandas read from CSV function. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do a little bit more. So let's do um, read these two lines, um, read CSV and then temperatures equals column. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, define a function um, and it could be just read temperatures or get temperatures is fine. Temperatures, yeah. 
Okay. And then we need to call that in the original cell. Right, right. Good idea. Return temperatures. That's <laughs> I, I almost forgot that. Yeah. Uh, and then we need to call that in the original cell to get the temperatures okay. uh, variable set. So temperatures equals. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, the read data from file comment is has become unnecessary. Uh, yeah. The or has it? It's get does get oh. temperatures tell you that it's from file? You can make it a doc string. So it could also be the function name directly. It could be something like um, read temperatures from file, or oh. um, what would be read data. Sorry, can you say that again? What should I do? Something like read data or read data from or read temperatures yeah. from file. If the, that's the function name, then it's clear what it's doing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Get temperatures like this. Yeah, that, that works. OK, yeah. Um, then we want two other functions. So um, should we give this function arguments? Well, um, or do we do I, that later? Yeah. So. That has not been suggested yet, although I'm not sure if they thought uh, about it. Okay. They didn't write it down in the suggestion. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's another thing that's okay. um, important, of course, in modular modularity, modular mm -hmm. code development. Um, but let's do it as it, uh, let, let's stick to this now. Okay. So um, then the other one would be for compute statistics. Okay. So maybe um, I'll split here. So. Uh, wait. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so this returns the mean. Um, but, well, it should return the mean. It currently doesn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's missing the return. Okay. Yeah. So it returns the mean temperature value. Mm -hmm. um, should we get temperatures inside that function? Uh, um, I guess it's fine. Um, I also don't want to make too many suggestions that are not yet in the mm -hmm. <laughs> in the discussion. Um, okay, so let's keep it as it. But we need to. No, we actually we do need to keep the temperatures. Uh, we need temperatures to, to be defined in the uh, the main okay. part of the code. Okay. Yeah. So we we need to do mean uh, temperatures equals get temperatures okay. in the main code. So I copy this to here. But then we do need we need to pass the temperatures variable to compute statistics. Okay. So, so mean so I guess we need to do mean equals compute statistics and then yeah pass the temperatures there. Okay. Okay. Um there was one more suggested function was plot results. Mm -hmm. um, would that so that be... would be, I guess, um, everything below this mean equals would go into computer uh, plot okay. results. Yeah, and I guess I should make the cell above this. Yeah. So I will copy and paste to here. No. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, that doesn't need to return anything, but we do need to call uh, it. Um, yeah. And we need to pass temperatures to it. It's uh, not defined inside the function otherwise. So the temperatures and the mean also, I guess? Uh, yes, true. It need, unless we call, well, like, okay, let's not call compute statistics inside plot, temp, uh, plot results. It's probably uh, better yeah. this way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we need to give it this argument. OK. OK. Now, um, what else? Um, so I, I mentioned so, that in the long run, we want to create three different plots. 
with uh, three different numbers of mm -hmm. measurements. So right. what could we do about that? Um, right now we are actually, Guess. so we have hard coded a good number of parameters directly into these functions. Um, and I think the, well, the num number of measurements actually is kind of semi hard coded into all of them. Um, right, that's just So here. we defined the number of temp measurements there. Mm -hmm. um, so we should make it a parameter in some one way or another for of all of these functions. Okay. Right? So okay. yeah, let's start with get temperature from file. Um, that should get um, just num, para num measurements uh, directly as a parameter. And I can delete the cell then? Yeah. Because it's not hard coded Then we anymore. can just call it with 25. Compute statistics. Should compute statistics get num measurements? Um, it can. The other option is to um, use the length of the temperatures column. Yeah. So doing len temperatures works directly. And because it's actually a pandas data frame, um, it doesn't even take any time to calculate. It's already calculated. Mm -hmm. So we can just use it directly. Yeah. I um, guess since this is pandas in a more uh, real prod, in a real project, we would just use the mean. But this is well, yeah, some yeah. We, big pandas can do a mean for us. But anyway, okay, yeah, that's true. Good. And actually, I mean that that is a good suggestion. Um, using pandas functions directly <laughs> is better than writing your own. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's uh, stick to this for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in the plot results. Um, we, we we have a few options. I don't know. Um, there's no nothing in the notes right now about this. Um, but what? How should we do this? Uh, well, actually, there's there is. Um, pass the file name as input is oh, a suggestion. Okay. So. Um, should it be the first or last argument. I would make it the last one, because okay. yeah, it could in principle be optional. Um. Mm -hmm. Should we okay. make so it now we'll... possible to do it without a file name? So you wouldn't save the figure then, I guess. So yes, that would make sense. So basically, we can plot it only in Jupyter, or we can yeah plot it and save it. On that note, um, later we'll want to move this into a script, um, and there we will not have. Um, we will not be able to show it in Jupyter. Nice. So that could also be an option, maybe. Uh, okay. um, so, but I'm not exactly sure what would be the best way of doing that. I don't know if people have suggestions. Yeah. Um, so let's um, just leave that for now. Okay. We do need to fix all of these uh, function calls now. Yeah. So okay. get temperatures needs a number of measurements. Mm -hmm. So that was 25. Um, yeah. Compute statistics actually doesn't. It it's fine. Doesn't. Okay. Yeah. And um, then plot results needs a file name, which previously was 25.png. Okay. Okay. So let's see that it runs. Mm, get temperatures. Ah, so yeah, I have to run everything in the notebook. Uh, yeah. I will do yeah, restart I wish... and run all. I wish it would just automatically rerun everything. In the background. <laughs> yeah. Get temperatures. Did I misspell it? No, we uh, renamed it. Oh, right. Get temperatures. File. <gasps> there okay. we go. So one suggestion is we could add some styling arguments to plot results. That's uh, true. Okay. I think it's a bit out of the scope here. Mm -hmm. So do you mean we would well, add them here? Uh, okay. Or... Let's do a few. Let's do a couple of things. Okay. So uh, first of all, there's this hard coded arguments. There's this um, R minus and color equals B, uh, mm -hmm. blue for. So there's mm -hmm. red. Um, what this R minus means is red and um, connected line. And mm -hmm. the B is for blue, color is blue, and then the line style with two dashes is, um, well, a dashed line. Mm -hmm. So do, those could all be optional arguments for this function. Yeah. So should we do that? Uh, let's do that. Okay. Um, one thing to think about here, though, is uh, how much um, how much reuse do, does this function have, and if this is for mm -hmm. just 
producing plots for your paper, how much options do you want to add? Yeah. Um, but um, optional parameters are generally always fine. Yeah, you don't need to give the, um, you don't need to give those parameters. So we can say, um, yeah, okay, good. Temp color is R and I guess mean color maybe. Okay. Uh... So what's the benefit of doing it this way? Um, well, it makes it easier to go and change the colors in your, um, when we have a script that plots all of these, uh, that creates all of these plots for our paper, mm -hmm. it's easier to go and yeah. uh, change a the color of, say, all of the temperature yeah. plots. And I guess if we wanted to plot some with different colors, depending on yeah, true. like what it was. Yeah. Then... Yeah. So the one thing I mentioned that we want to do in the long run is to plot at least three different. Ah, uh, okay. Um, plot this at least three different ways. Let's do so that. So the easiest way to do it here is with a for loop. Um, so let's start with that. Should um, I do it here? Yeah, let's do it here. So let's do a for, for... loop of um, yeah, four n measurements in, um, and we want the 25, 50, and 100. Okay. And we need to indent these things. So what else needs to be changed? This should be end measurements. Yeah. And then we probably also want to change the file name. Should this be, we use the like, Python F string thing. Yeah, F string for F format, or formatted strings are a useful way of doing that or okay. nice looking way. So yeah. one suggestion is, um, should the color and font markers be global variables? Mm. Um, what do you think? It depends. I mean, mm. that would make it less modular in yeah. the sense that it would have, the function would depend on things that are defined outside it. Mm -hmm. um, so it would make it harder to take out of this specific uh, notebook and use somewhere else. Yeah. But the upside also is if you want to enforce a uniform style across your in your paper with, of course, users, uh, well, some function calls could also use this um, uh, current um, like optional parameters to yeah. change them. Um, you could do that in um, clo with global parameters. Although even then, I would suggest um, making it a Python module mm -hmm. and then using the space, the global space in quotation marks inside that Python module. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's, it depends on the situation. Yeah. There's upsides and downsides. But we want to make things as modular as possible here because, uh, well, this is the modular code development uh, yeah. lesson. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, not uh, let's try to reduce global variables as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Do we actually have any global variables left? I guess not. No. no. Okay. Um, that's fine. So okay. everything's controllable here. And sure. now, I th I think we also so one thing we haven't we've been talking about but we haven't mentioned the word uh, or the expression is side effects. So previously these functions did have some side effects. And that means they changed things in global vari a global scope. Um, so some global variables depended on this um, whether these functions were run or not. And now we pretty much don't have side effects anymore. Um, the plotting thing might be changing default axis, but otherwise, mm -hmm. yeah. Should we run it? Yeah, let's run the whole thing. I'm curious to and see. And now let's see what people say. Is there something we can do to improve these plots? Does it look different? I guess, yes. So it's... Yeah, it has a bit more data. More data. But why does the first one has... Oh, oh sorry, there is a 25 there as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's very hard from... So, okay, we don't have access labels. So... 
Um, it's a bit hard to uh, tell these plots apart from each other if you just see one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and if we put them in a paper, we, we should have access labels. Yeah. So where should we do that? Um, in the plot function or in here? Mm -hmm. Is the so, plot function only going to be used for temperatures and means in the future or multiple things? I would think so. It takes a temperatures and means arg mean argument. Mm -hmm. In making it too general um, might not be a good idea because right. then I, yeah. we kind of end up just coding in the parameters instead of coding in the code. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like we want to make it somewhat general. Um, yeah. So uh, of course, so the in order to avoid side effects, the label should be set in the plot function. But also, we can um, we can make the labels in the parameters. Oh. oh, one good suggestion is to set the a global uh, y axis or set the same y axis to each of these uh, plots oh. so that we can directly compare them. Okay. Um, so, so now we are. Yeah. How do I? Uh, the X label uh, needs a oh, like a closing yes. quotation mark. Okay. Um, how do you actually? So it, it's Y yes. limit, right? Is it PLD dot Y limit, or do you need to get the axis from the plot? Y lim or set Y lim. Let's see, do we have a, okay, yes, someone says this. So do I call it with zero and the upper limit? Um, yeah, and first the lower limit, then the upper limit. Uh, should I have a hard-coded upper limit or as an argument? It, I think it should be an argument okay. because it would depend on the data. Um, but then we probably, so we need to pass it as an argument. Okay, we can do that. Should there be a default value? Mm, yeah, why not? Um, something like 20 degrees or... Oh, wait, this is... Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but that means the lower value should be lower uh, the, oh, yeah okay the lower value definitely shouldn't be zero because we're actually always below zero yeah um so what would you recommend um, well um, it should probably be variable but um or i guess this also minus should be variable. minus 15 probably is good a, a good a good default value here okay and this is not max um, measure this is max temperature Okay. Okay. Um, so let me see. Okay. So we have 20 minutes. So I think it would be good to move to, okay. um, to the part where we make this a script. Uh, let's just try running it first though. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, well. Okay. Now I'm a bit unsatisfied by the fact that the um, lower limit is not a parameter, but the higher limit is. Yeah. They should both be parameters. Should I should we parse pass them together as a? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, like temperature range or uh -huh. well, limit, I guess is good enough. What was the lower one? Minus. 20 minus uh, 15 minus it was minus 15 but minus i mean i mean given what we know about the range actually um you can just pass the yeah um you can just pass the tuple directly uh, like you're just while in oh well that also uh, works uh like this it works yeah yeah uh, it should work. okay i'll try it Yes. Okay. Okay. And um, for measurements from January, I get we probably don't need to go as far as plus fifteen. But um, yeah, I find it interesting yeah, it's fine. that on oh, no, that 
this is this is a higher average temperature. Okay, mm. but yeah, yeah, so we got it. Yeah. So okay, it works now. It does what we want. Um, why would we want to move it to a script? Well, I mean, I guess we'll have different input files. And yeah. in Jupyter, I have to go actually edit it every time I change the value. Yeah. And with the script, I can somehow, like, we basically, we can make another script that will run this with different parameters automatically. Yeah. You can, um, so we can add parameters to the script that you can then from the command line you can pass parameters to the script mm -hmm. and have different temperature or different y ranges or different yeah. um, numbers of measurements and so on mm -hmm. okay um so to do that um do you want to move the command line or um well yeah should i should whatever I... text editor you want to open it's uh should i create a new python file from yeah jupyter so yeah. I can make a text Works. file, and we can call this. I should give these names. Um, yeah, the temp analysis. Okay. Temp analysis dot py. Yeah, uh, descriptive name is is good. So one thing that happened when we were uh, moving things into functions is that the we essentially removed the comments and the function names became the comments. And the same goes for file names. So mm -hmm. um, a good file name is in itself a comment. Makes sense. OK, so the first thing to do to make it a script is to copy everything that yeah. runs all the Python code into the script and in the correct order. Actually, should I export it as something? Yeah, um, OK, let's try that. Um... Is there an? Save and export notebook as executable script. Oh, okay. Okay, well, it downloaded it. Um, I'll go to the command line now, if that's okay. Yeah. New terminal. Let's see, can I move this down? Yes. I saw it was called untitled one. So I'm using Linux command line commands here to copy a file from the default download location to the current place and replacing the temp analysis script. I guess I should open it again. Yes, I guess it didn't. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now there's some extra comments. Um, the good thing, in, uh, there's a, a comment in the beginning that actually is a useful thing to have. So that tells most um, operating systems that this is a Python script. Mm -hmm. So you could run it directly without calling Python script name. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's not 100% necessary, but I mean, it's a nice yeah. thing to, to have, nice thing to know. Should I show that? Um, yeah, why not? So, um, on... so we need to make it an executable. So we need to change the permissions. So this is a Linux command. It says make this like ch mod change mode, and now I can run like this. And does it work? Does the graphical plotting even work? I actually don't know. It probably is actually stuck in a show statement. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the oh, plotting. Look, OK, it, it did open. Popped it up. Okay. OK. And if I close it, it does another one and then another one. So yeah, um, for the script, we probably want to remove the uh, plot.show uh, line. OK. Uh, or at least make it optional. Let's make it a parameter so we can 
add a, a parameter that says show plot or something like that, and then if show plot, plot dot show. And maybe default it to false. Uh, yeah, yeah, default to false. Okay. One very good question. How about version control? Uh -huh. We are pretty far with our code, and we haven't started using version control. Should I start? So let's that? do. Yeah, let's let's start version control. So okay, um, get in it, and then um, I guess we'll commit the script. And why not the um, why not the notebook as well? Should I give the notebook a better name first? Yeah. Rename. What should it be called? Why not temp analysis? Temp analysis that ipy and b. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, there is a very good suggestion to include tests, um, but since the la previous lesson was tests. Um, I think we will prioritize adding a command line interface. Um, another suggestion is to add a command line interface uh, using ArcPass. Um, do you remember off the top of your head how to do that? Because if not, I suggest we use click instead of ArcPass. So I can do it with ArcPass. Um... I think I could do that off the top of my head, but I'm new to click, so maybe we should do that and you can teach me something. Okay, let's use click. Okay. Um, so click is built into Python 3, at least most latest versions. So you probably mm -hmm. don't need to install anything. Um, okay. You can just import click at the top of the script. Okay. Um, we probably should remove the cell name comments as well. Yeah. Um, that's not useful information. So okay. yeah, click as it's uh, as it sounds, um, and then at the bottom where we have this main um, section, mm -hmm. mm, we make that into a function. Okay. Should I call it main? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. It, it's usually the the. The, the thing you run as a script in a Python script is often called main. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to keep this as a script, though, we should add the standard Python boilerplate of if underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Um, that's without the. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, on course. the left side, it's without uh, <laughs> without quotation marks on the right side with. OK, mm -hmm. uh, then run main. Okay. And what does without this do? any parameters. OK, so r if you are running this as a script, then the name will be main. Um, otherwise, it will be the file name. So if you're running this as a script, it will run the main function. If you are just importing it, it will not run the main function. It will just define all the functions that are in this file. So this is um, useful if you would if you think you might ever want to import this the functions we have defined here. And it's something you usually just do when you write a Python script, um, at least at some point. Mm -hmm. OK, so now we need to change the main function a little bit. So um, what parameter should we add? Um, let's do at least the number of measurements. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. the first thing we add, though, is um, we add a decorator above main. Um, that's at click dot command mm -hmm. and parentheses um, open and close. Okay. And then below that, at click dot option. Okay. Okay. And in the parentheses, um, we need to first add the name of the option that the command line argument. So it would be uh, in, par in, in uh, yeah, uh, minus minus measurements or dash dash measurements. Mm -hmm. Or num measurements, maybe. Oh. OK. OK. And then uh, let's make it a required parameter. So comma space required equals true. Mm -hmm. And let's say type, uh, so the, uh, as another argument, type equals int. And add a help text. So another parameter, help equals 
number of measurements to plot. Um, this though, this is not a list. Now we're just plotting one number of measurements. Mm -hmm. So, so remove the for loop. Yeah, li yeah, remove the for loop. And now we need to add a an argument to the main function called num underscore measurements. So the um, dash becomes an underscore. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. Um, so now it gets num measurements as a um, this function gets num measurements as an argument. Oh, yeah, good catch. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, we can also add an in, input file. Uh -huh. Oh, this is something we didn't do yet. Um, mm -hmm. So let's add an input file parameter. Okay. Should it be before or after num measurements? Um, it, well, it should be after, this? but well, the order only um, needs to be the same as the order of arguments in the function. Okay. Um, so let's call this in file minus minus in file okay. um, and then re well required is true and the help desk help text is something like file name or file name for reading data okay that makes sense okay we're gonna, we're gonna remind yeah. people at csv um but now and now we need to add it as an argument so uh may needs to take uh, in file argument before or after it, it or... should be after the number oh. of measurements okay okay but now um we are not actually using this in get temperatures so let's pass it to get temperatures uh maybe the file name should be before or well i guess it doesn't matter that much but to my brain before makes yeah. the most sense yeah. like most important yeah first. it's the yeah, the most important word first modifiers later. Okay. Um, okay. So then we go up, look up to the uh, get temperatures function and add um, file name parameter. And this has a different file name or different name of the argument, but I guess that doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Um, should we add an output file argument as well and then try running it okay so i will save okay. and actually we haven't run it yet python uh temp analysis okay now we have two required arguments so let's just see what happens when we run without the required arguments Okay, so it tells you that number of measurements is missing, and it also tells you that you can get more information by writing dash dash help. Um, Should I do dash dash help? Yeah, yeah, let's do dash dash help. Um, so that will print each possible argument and the help mm -hmm. text we have added to these okay. arguments. So we need to add a number of measurements, which is an integer, and we need to add an input file. So how many measurements should we do? Mm, not 25. 25. The okay. standard when we started. Um, and in file is, um, what was the file name? Temperatures.csv. Temperatures.csv, okay. okay. Good. And it saves it to the standard 25.png still, right? Yes, yes. So we didn't add an output file argument. So out, the output file is number of measurements.png. Mm -hmm. which um, works for now, but we could yeah. also make it an optional argument. Okay. Yeah, so let's run this. Huh. And it should have cre uh, created the plot file. Um, we have created them a number of times. So, yeah. well, six seconds six ago, seconds. okay. The other ones are older. So, yeah. In... yeah, it uh, clearly yeah. worked. Yeah. Okay. Let's do an optional argument and give it a default okay. value. So so it's almost the same um, would, as the in file. Sorry. Does in file need the two dashes here? Can we make it a positional argument? If it's always there. Um, 
I am not actually sure how you can or whether you can do that with click, but I mean there is usually a way of make using yeah or creating uh, positional arguments. Let's try it and see. So what's the other option? Uh, we need to um, add out file. Out file. Maybe this can be optional. Equals, it's optional, right? Yeah. Um, required is false by default. Okay. You don't have to give it required, but you can give it a default value. Um, so it's not required. You probably should give it the default value. Okay. Um, but in this case, I guess the default should be none. Mm. Um, and then we can construct the file name from the okay. number of measurements. Uh, okay, yeah. Non output file name default. Or no. Default. So uh, let me find how do you do. So. Okay, so yeah. So then we need to check if. Out, out file. Well, out file needs to be a parameter of the main function. It should oh, be the last yeah. parameter of the main function. Do I need to set a default to none or? I don't think that... so. Okay. I'm not. I don't think it makes a difference. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, should I try something here? If if out file is none, out file equals this thing based on the number of measurements. Yeah. And then we can use that out file. And I guess I could do more complicated things here, like also include the input file name as one of the options and so on. Yeah. But well, I mean, I guess this is good enough. Yeah. Okay, should I purposes? save yeah. it and give it a try? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I come back to my terminal. And now, if this works as I hope, since there's not the dashes here, so there's two kinds of arguments. There's optional arguments that have dashes, and traditionally they can be in any order. And there's positional yeah. arguments like this, which have to be in a certain order, but you yeah. don't need to give the name of them. So oftentimes the important arguments that are always required become positional and you give them by order and optional ones, well, like that. Should I try running? Yeah, let's see. Let's see if it works. Default none. Oh. Okay, default equals Syntax none. Syntax error. Um, there's a comma. comma missing, yes. No options name. Okay, so I guess it has to be dash dash in file. Um, so it, it should be possible to have an option or maybe it's an argument then. Ah, could it be argument? Well. Let's see. Yes, it, it needs to be an argument. So it's a click dot argument, okay. and then just the name for the argument, yeah. and it can be required. I will. Oh, gee. Oh. I. Uh, P to you. Okay. In it got. Okay. Well. I think my idea of making it an argument instead of option has probably failed somehow. Mm, may, it might be that it needs to be before the options. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, let's go back to option. Yeah. Um, so we have to give it the in file. Let's see what else. Um, so yeah, someone asks if the click dot option lines need to match the order in the uh, function arguments, and yeah, that's uh, that is how click uh -huh. works. Um, so it doesn't so go yeah, by name. Yeah, they always need to be in the same order. No, it, yeah, it doesn't go by name. Okay. Um, 
yeah, there we go. So it worked. I guess we don't need to look at the plot again, but can we try saving mm. to a different file name? Yeah, let's try that. And then I think it's time for a break. Ah, uh, yes. But we have a couple of good questions and a few other things to do after the break. Uh, um, how many can we plot? Can we plot 500? I don't know how many measurements there are in the file. Yeah. There are no not 500 days in a year. Mm. It might fail. Well, let's do 200. Okay, I'm going to do it. Yep. I push enter and it worked. Okay, so there should be a new file with a name it's plot 200. Plot 200 and yep, it worked. Okay. Yeah. There's probably not one measurement per day because otherwise day number 175, you wouldn't expect to go below minus 15. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would make sense to add more arguments and make the the, the script more general, mm -hmm. um, like adding the option of giving three different numbers of measurements if we actually want these three different plots mm -hmm. in our paper, or just write a, another script that um, that does that instead. Yeah. Um, okay, but otherwise. Um, yeah, let's go to the break and oh. I guess. So there's a correction that says click is not in the Python default library. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure about this. Maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. I get, I have the impression that it is in some of the latest versions huh. okay. of Python. At least I, I generally don't install it, <laughs> but yeah. um, maybe that's just, it. I just have it somewhere. Um, but it, it is good to include the, uh, include it as a dependency anyway. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, it's not okay. a part of the standard library. So okay. yeah, it needs to be a dependency, uh, which we'll do after the break. Yes. So okay. see you at 12 past. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Hello, we're back. Hello. Or so we um, hope. So where were we now? We had just done this command line. So, um, yeah, no, like for this command line thing, how is it better than making a notebook I can rerun? Yeah. Um, so one thing is that um, it could be a utility that you share to, to many people that people just install and can run without knowing any Python. But really um, for a lot of people also, um, a notebook is something that's easier to run than a command from the command line. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, that's actually a bit hard to say um, which one is better. So, so I added a question in the notes actually. So like, please uh, vote and give your opinions on what's actually better. Mm -hmm. Which one would you rather get if someone's sharing a project oh. with you? Um, but the yeah, big upside in a command line interface is that you can then use it to like, script an entire workflow from downloading the files to um, producing the plots and maybe uh, producing tables for your paper, plots for your paper. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can go from raw data to a finished paper in a single yeah. command once you uh, write the script. Yeah. And I guess for the computing clusters and so on, that's very relevant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, usually you don't get an interactive environment for commands. So you, can, you don't get a Jupyter notebook um, yeah. this, or a computing cluster. This actually happens pretty often when people come to us. They have a Jupyter notebook and says, I need to run this on the cluster for 10,000 different values. And well, if it's a loop in a Jupyter notebook, you can only run it on one processor. Yeah. But once it is 
as a command line, it's really easy to write another interface, like whether it's using state make or your own script or whatever, that will go and run it 10,000 separate times on 10,000 different computer processors and then combine them later. Okay, so um, we have some time, rather limited, I think. One thing we probably should do is move a bit closer to a package. And also, like, this is something that also helps answer this question. So um, first, so what, what I'm thinking of is taking this, taking the functions from this file that could be used in a different project and mm -hmm. turning them into a module that mm -hmm. you could share with okay. other people. So one question is, what do, do you think the plotting function is too specific? Or should we just include all of these three functions? Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, should we pretend the plotting function is too specific and the other yeah, ones are yeah. the general code? So let's say the plotting function is something we wrote to have a uniform plotting thing for a single project or for a paper. And the other two are something that could easily be used in other projects as well. So let's take the, the first two functions and create a new file um, or a new Python module. Okay, so um, to the browser, new, new text file. So what this could be, be something like um, temperature utilities. That's pi. Okay. Okay. And then we need to paste these functions here. So these two get moved. Yeah. Does this need okay. any other dependencies? It does depend on. No, it, it, it's not doing any plotting. Does it? It oh. depends on only on pandas, I guess. Okay, so that so we pandas, need to import pandas. Is pandas still needed here? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I will move it. Okay. Okay. And yeah. now what do I have to do? Okay, so now we need to import the functions uh, from these temp utils. Okay. So one way to do it without having to change any of the code below is to import from uh, temp utils. But then um, this maybe depends a bit more on, um, oh, oh, no, sorry. This makes it a bit more less readable mm -hmm. because now um, if you import specific functions um, and then you're looking at the code below, nothing about that function name tells you that it came from temp utils mm -hmm. in, and not from pandas, for example, uh, or okay. matplotlib. So yeah, so um, maybe, yeah import temp utils and uh, yeah. you can give it a shorter name if you want to, um, but it's fine Enough as it is. Um, and then when we call the functions, it needs to be temp utils dot something. And compute statistics also. Okay. Okay. Pause. Now it should work again. Okay. Um, and then for distributing this code, one very important thing that we haven't done yet is um, keeping track of dependencies. Mm -hmm. So in our um, original notebook, we didn't really have any way of doing that. Um, I mean, you can always create, create a requirements.txt file and have a list. Um, so, okay, so how would you, let, let's think if this is a, a bigger project, let's mm -hmm. um, imagine that you have more than two files in the project that import things. How would you figure out what the dependencies are? Uh, um, well, what, what do I, you actually need to run? <laughs> what I usually yeah, do. Well, yeah, what would you do? Um, you I, don't actually have to do it to, to show it, but uh, what yeah. would you do? So I'd make a new virtual environment with nothing installed in it. I would try running my things. I would see what fails with import errors 
I would add that to requirements.txt in the virtual environment and then repeat until it's done. That would be basically exactly my answer as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so create an, uh, we would create an empty, empty environment and then install packages until it works yeah. and uh, put all of those package names into requirements.txt. But now we do know what we want. So we, we can just write a requirements.txt file for this project. Um, another way of doing it, of course, is you start a requirements.txt when you still can track all the dependencies in your head. Um, when they are just in a couple of files and then you write them down and when the project grows, you keep adding stuff to the requirements. Is it just pandas and click that's required? And matplotlib. matplotlib. How do you make sure that we got this correct and that it hasn't become, doesn't go off after a time? Well, um, I mean, basically the same trick. You create an empty environment, you install the stuff in requirements.txt, mm -hmm. and then you see if it runs. But actually, um, since we just set up tests in the previous session, um, what our test workflow on GitHub did is install all the requirements and then run the tests. So if the tests succeed, yeah. clearly the requirements were sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, so that means not only when we have the test, it's validating our code, it validates all the requirements. So if someone else wants yeah. to use the code, we can be reasonably sure that it has all they need and there's not something obvious being left out of it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's a great thing about these test workflows because they don't run on your machine. It, if it if the test succeeds, then it runs on at least two different machines. <laughs> it, it runs on your machine, but it also runs on this cloud system that's just um, yeah. installed from scratch without with only the dependencies you specified. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a lot better than just running on one machine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so requirements, I guess we already have the Conda environment, so there's well, and we shouldn't be too specific about how things are done in Python. We have another course yeah. for that, actually. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, okay. So yeah, now we have specified the requirements and it should be installable by anyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't really have a lot of time. We could just move to wrap up. Yeah, sure. Um, one option would be to add tests to mm -hmm. um, the, well, the functions we that Maybe here. Uh, defined, but how complicated will that get? Um, com yeah, compute statistics is easier to test. We can just test that one. Um, one more thing that um, we touched on, but we didn't, I guess, quite finish. Um, what do you think about the function name compute statistics? That's a bit general for what it does. Yeah. But I and guess it com computes one specific statistic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just computes the mean. Yeah. So maybe we should change it to compute mean. Yeah. Should I do it or should Yeah. We? Yeah. Let's do that. But that's that's the I was about to say last step. That's the second to last step. Then we um, commit the changes to Git. Ah, uh, yes. And give it a nice name. I give it a nice commit message. Compute statistics. Compute mean. Uh, now we probably did too many changes between commits, mm -hmm. so we're going to have a big commit that changes a lot of things. Yeah. Should I try running it to verify it works? Yeah, yeah, let's do. Okay. And you could also run pytest. Um, uh, on test. And you need the name of the file. So it's uh, the temp utils. Yeah. Name error compute. Ah. Ah. Of course. <laughs> yes. So. I forgot to rename it. Compute. I 
type the name wrong. Can assert to, ah, I did okay, the test yes. wrong. Hey, it worked finally. Great. Okay. Now, um, there were a bunch of things wrong with the test now that it works. Are we sure that it's correct? <laughs> <laughs> like you shouldn't stop thinking if the test is right just because you get the correct result. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think I yeah, think the so. mean of one, two, and three is in fact two. So that's correct. So from the command line, I will get add temp analysis, temp utils, requirements. From before, we have learned get status to see what's missing. Uh, we have the plots that are generated. Should we make a git ignore file? Um, Maybe we can that kind of it, well, that would Let's... eat up the time of the, yeah. the well the wrap up and discussion. But um, it's a useful thing to remind people of. Okay. Though. So. Yeah. Should we go to notes then? Okay. Yeah. Let's go to notes. And yeah, just please continue to have a conversation about it. Like what, yeah. how could we still make this better? Um, what, um, what else would you do to, um, in this project? Did you think it was useful? I thought of another benefit of the command line. So let's say we send this analysis and it's some reasonably complicated thing to someone and they want to run it on their own data. It's easier yeah. for them to have this defined interface that says, here's how you give the input file and how you configure it than to have to go figure out your code, modify it and whatever. Yeah. If we run several different analysis, so let's say we have a different input file that we are testing, then we don't have to modify our main code for every individual task and have to remember how to go back to the tasks we had before. How similar is this to what you would do in your own work? Um, it depends a bit, um, often I don't start from Jupyter. I'm often start from scripts, but if there's a lot of plotting involved, then I would start from Jupyter and then it mm. would pretty much follow this workflow. Yeah. Like at some point, certain cells get, or certain parts get complicated enough that it make more sense as a separate utility module. Mm -hmm. And then that might become a package of its own. Yeah. Um, that's just the dependency of the script. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, if the end result is something other than displaying plots in Jupyter, then it would become a script at some point. Okay. Right. Or a command yeah. line interface. Mm -hmm. But Jupyter is pretty good at displaying plots and um, yeah. running a relatively simple Python script. So one option here would have been um, kind of to go back to Jupyter. If you want to give this analysis to someone who finds Jupyter more comfortable than the command line, then you could import these utility functions into Jupyter, like import all the functions needed in the Jupyter, and if, then just call them, uh, um, yeah. call them okay. in the Jupyter notebook in a single cell, uh, basically. So we might have the Jupyter notebook that's used for development and testing and exploring new data, in addition to the command line, which runs known analysis on existing data. Yeah. 